two contenders today. We got the A7C and the A7 IV, my brand new A7 IV, and this is going to be a video comparing them. And I mean, spoiler alert, my brand new, more expensive A7 IV is going to win. But really what this video is actually about is for people that were in my shoes that were thinking of upgrading from the A7C to the A7 IV or people that are trying to decide between the two because they're kind of in a very close price point and I think could be what people are considering as their two options. This is going to be a video to help you decide if the A7 IV is worth that extra bit of money. I've got a whole list of categories that I've compared the two camera bodies in. And one more spoiler, the A7C is gonna take it home in almost all the cases, but there is one situation that I still really prefer the A7C, so do stick around for that. To give you a little backstory on the A7C here, this is the first Sony camera that I purchased for myself when I decided I wanted to get into wildlife photography. I also wanted to use it for making YouTube videos. Pretty much fell in love with photography and videography in general since getting this camera. I picked it up in October of 2022, so I haven't even had it a full year yet. And then just probably a month ago, almost to the day, is when I got this a7 IV. And if you've checked out any of my Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens videos, I do want to just say that I love this pairing of the a7 IV and this lens. It's been awesome. I actually just went out today looking for an owl on like the, the local mountain that I run on, and I got totally skunked. Went up at five in the morning, it was raining. Pretty much impossible to spot unless he moves. Still had a great day. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's awesome. Now I do not consider myself to be a professional photographer at this point. I think I'm all right at it, but ultimately I'm not gonna give you super technical data about the specs of these cameras at all. This is just gonna be user experience and uh, maybe a beginner's perspective as well, which might be helpful if you're watching this video. And the first thing I think we'll talk about and probably what would be the most important thing to consider with a camera is the image quality. And the a7 IV is gonna take that point. It's just better. <laughs> I don't know if it's like a newer, better designed sensor or what, but it does look better to my eye, I can tell. I know that is a higher megapixel sensor in that this is a 33 megapixel sensor versus a 24. And that's gonna be, you know, more detail and give us a little bit more crop. And if you are also into wildlife photography, being able to crop in is a pretty big deal. So that little bit of extra crop factor that I'm able to pull off with the a7 IV is worth a ton to me. And in a very related category, but kind of a separate category would be its focus abilities and its ability to hit focus and be very sharp. And the a7 IV again, destroys in that category. I didn't know how good autofocus could be. I recently got to try the a7 R5. They're like brand new, super AI autofocus system. And that was crazy cool. I got to, yeah, it, it was actually super insane. Honestly, I was shooting hundreds of eagles up North Vancouver Island and it was tracking like, like I couldn't believe, but the A7 IV, which does not have that system is still crazy good. And I can't really, I don't really need more than this can pull off. I mean, the new one's awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's better, but this is still killer. It's so quick. I'm I'm blown away. I didn't really realize how limited and slow the A7C was. If you're not aware, the A7C is very similar to the A7 III, so keep that in mind. So autofocus, A7 IV wins. And on the wildlife note, the A7 IV has human, animal, and bird categories, where I think that this, uh, the A7C only has human and animal. Now we'll talk about its actual form factor, because that is what attracts a lot of people to the A7C, is that it's a very small camera. It's, uh, you know, I don't have giant hands, but I definitely don't have small hands. It's, it's small. And in fact, for me, <laughs> it's, way too small. My finger wants to rest way over here. Not like I I have to cramp my finger quite a bit to get at this button. It's not actually very comfortable. Not a deal breaker. I mean, I shot, I worked, but I will say that for video, I set it up so that I could use the shutter button as my video start as well, because getting that button was just like an impossible little gymnastic feat for me. And I'm a guitar player, so I'm pretty good at finger stuff. <laughs> Where the A7 IV is bigger for sure and heavier, I think. Yes, definitely heavier, but 
like my finger lands right on the shutter button. I'm it's right where I want it. It's like a perfect fit. It's comfier because of that to me. Like this grip feels like it's, you know, made for my hand much more so than the A7C. So form factor, I'm actually going to give it to the A7 IV, even though this A7C is smaller and lighter. The reality is, and you'll know this if you get the A7C, is that once you stick a lens on it, the form factor is lost. It's about the same size, like because it's a tiny bit shallower. Uh, yeah, it's a tiny bit shallower than the A7 IV, but with a lens, it virtually becomes the exact same size. It's not gonna save you any room in the bag, I would say. Now, we talked about image quality for photos, but what about video? And the a7 IV clearly takes that category as well in the video department. I actually really do like the a7C for video. It's a great little YouTuber camera. It doesn't have 4K 60, so if you want creamy slow-mo in 4K, it can't do that for you, which is a bummer and a big reason of why I wanted the A7 IV in the first place. But as like a talking head YouTube video camera, it really does do well. However, the A7 IV is just more of a beast. I got this for like 3000 bucks and I think this is like 2000 bucks in Canada and how much more you get in the video compartment, I think makes it worthwhile in that alone. I've got 10 bit color, which is really nice. I really do notice. That lets me use S-Log3 and S-Cinetone, and I really like S-Log3. It's, it's been fun. I'm, you know, my color grading chops aren't really there yet, but you gotta start somewhere, and I can see the potential. And of course, that 4K 60 FPS is super handy for all videos types. A lot of the intro videos I put into my own videos on this channel are a lot of slow motion, like nature shots and stuff like that. All of that is just so much better on this camera. And one more thing that I didn't even think of when I bought it, but the stabilization on this camera, it has like active steady mode where I couldn't get that on the A7C, at least I couldn't figure out how, far superior. Again, pairing it with my Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens, now I can handhold that thing and actually kind of follow along in video mode and not need a tripod. Well, tripod's still gonna be better in a lot of cases, but I'm pretty impressed what I can pull off just from that stabilization built into the camera. It's just better all around. We're kind of jumping all around, but let's actually talk about form factor as in external controls now. And that's another huge difference between these cameras. They might look similar, but what you can actually access with your fingers on the outside of the camera, rather than having to menu dive on the Sony a7 IV is like five times what you can do on the a7C. I didn't realize that until I bought this. I bought it, had noticed a couple of the buttons, and then while I was shooting all day with it, I was like, oh wow, I can change anything I need to without having to go into a menu at all. While I'm shooting, I can in real time adjust everything. <laughs> For example, there's no aperture control in the A7C unless you assign this little jog wheel, but then where's your shutter gonna be? And ISO, and you need access to all three of those at the same time. And what if you're in spot focus mode and you there's no, there's no joystick on this, where on the A7 IV, this little joystick here, that joystick has transformed my photography style. It's not only is it more fun, you get better photos, I'm convinced. Uh, like it's it's the way to go. So big fan of the A7IV's external controls. There's a dial right here that I've got on aperture. There's a two on the back. That's my shutter there. This is my exposure comp. My ISO is assigned down here. And these custom buttons, that's my focus mode, my white balance, like anything you need is available right there. And this is a true hybrid camera. The A7C and the A7 III and the A7 IV are all in that hybrid series. My understanding, fun fact, fun tip maybe, maybe not fact, but pretty sure it's a fact, is that when there is no letter in between the A7 and the, the next digits, the Roman numerals, those are the hybrid lines. So the R are the photography line, the resolution, I think is what that stands for. S, I don't know what S stands for, but it's like the film line. FX is obviously cinema line. And then the A7 III and A7 IV, I believe, are the hybrid line. And they nailed that, that factor in the A7 IV. Like, if you want to be able to actually shoot hybrid, there's this little dial under the mode switch. And I don't know if I can show it to you. Let's see. It's this little button here. And if I change that, you'll notice that I just moved it to the right, but this top dial didn't change. That controls your slow-mo, your video mode, and your photo mode. And you can set it to retain or change any of your settings 
in between those modes. So that means that I can have a totally different aperture focus mode and shutter speed on video versus my photography and my slow-mo. And that's essential. I couldn't, I mean, at least I didn't know how to do that on the a7C. And even if you could, there was no way to quickly be go between those modes reliably, in my opinion, at least as conveniently as you can on this. And you, you absolutely need that because if you're like shooting wildlife photography, for example, or really any photography, your shutter is going to be way higher than you're going to want in video mode and slow-mo uh, S&Q mode. Like it's just an essential feature if you actually want to be in real time switching between photo and video. I don't know how people live without that. It's the bomb. It's just so much better. <laughs> I have so much fun operating this camera and all the controls on it feel so intuitive to me. This is just so much more of a tool. It's awesome. Up next, I think we could talk about the viewfinder and you'll notice that the viewfinder is on the side on the a7C and it is on like centered more essentially centered with the lens on the a7 IV. And I guess that makes sense for lining up your shots, having it centered, but I kind of didn't mind it on the side of the a7C because my nose skips the camera. <laughs> Maybe I've just got a big nose, but with the a7 IV and most cameras, I'll admit, kind of smushing up against the screen and then my screen's all dirty with like greasy nose oils. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kind of gross, but it's, I, I'm sure every photographer lives with that. <laughs> it's just the way it is. But aside from its placement, there's no comparison. I, I have to eat my words a little bit on this because I did a video on my thoughts on the A7C uh, and the viewfinder and uh, people have remarked that the viewfinder is like very small and what it shows you when you stick your eye up there is not a big image. And I didn't think it was a big deal, but there's no going back. Once I had this and I got used to the A7IV's beautiful viewfinder image, yeah, it's it's better. You got the theme here. But we got one tie, I think. I didn't do a scientific test, but one tie. And then we also have one thing that I actually do prefer in the A7C. And first off the tie, battery life. They're approximately the same. Probably a little bit better in the A7C if I had to guess but I haven't noticed much of a difference with this. And maybe I'm crazy, but I always carry an extra battery around anyways. When I was doing just photography, I was pretty much making it through a super long day on the one battery, Sony, like actual native battery. I brought two, I think. <laughs> it was fine, it, like it's good. It's not really something I think you have to worry about with either of these cameras. And now the last thing that I gotta say is better in the A7C and that is overheating. The a7 IV has an overheating problem and I have run into it. I ran into it trying to film my buddy's band, trying to help out, and <laughs> that sucked. Uh, then I quickly menu dive, found a setting that lets you turn it up to like high temp shut off, which gives you a little bit longer for sure. And I've made it through that shoot, but I also, I do a podcast and my podcast, I don't know, we'll be on a call for a few hours and it crapped out during one of the episodes and that sucked a lot. And it just barely made it the other day through another one after a couple more setting experiments, trying to get it better. I just need it to last longer. I think I found a solution. I haven't got to test it yet. So I might have to do a video on how I'm getting it to work for me. But suffice it to say, it's an issue. Uh, it seems like an hour to an hour and a half is kind of your runtime with a 7 IV before it runs into heating problems. I mean, that's like recording, you know, constantly. If you're just doing photography, haven't run into any heating issues at all. But video, I think it could be an issue if you're doing super long takes. So want to give you a heads up on that. I don't think I ever had a heat warning on the A7C once, which is really cool. I guess it makes sense. This is just doing more processing. <laughs> it's thinking harder. Yeah, it's still a bummer. So gotta give it to the A7C on that. It gets a point. It is a great little camera. It's like two grand. I think it might be, yeah, pretty sure it's two grand brand new right now in Canada. Monopoly money, where this is, I think, just north of three grand. Is it worth that price difference? I think 100%, I couldn't re recommend it enough, would 100% go for this camera every time. This isn't a bad camera, but this is so much better. The a7 IV is miles ahead of it 
in my opinion. And there's not really any reason to go for this other than if money is an issue. Take that information as you will. I'm selling this. So if you want this after I just trash talked it for <laughs> however long this video was, be my guest, hit me up. I want to keep it as a B cam, but ultimately my wife didn't notice that I had this camera for like a few weeks. <laughs> Eventually she found out <laughs> and I got to play ball. This thing's got to go. So if you want an A7C, you can hit me up. If you uh, like this video, please do subscribe. It's been, this channel's grown way quicker than I ever thought it would. This is like my side for fun channel and I love everybody watching. I love comments and yeah, it's been one of the funnest things I've gotten to do. So thank you all very much. And I think I've got a couple more cool videos on the way. I got one, like a first impressions video with this. I mean, you got the gist of it here, but go a little bit deeper. I got some fun wildlife shoot stuff that I'm doing, some other photography stuff too, like off-camera flash photography, portrait photography, product photography. I think there's a lot of things we can dive into and I'm just happy people want to follow along and have fun with me. Until then though, see you on the next one. Take care.